about renal renovation for the hypertension management. So my journey had started a little bit earlier in the sense uh, most of my work is related to arrhythmia, especially ear fibrillation, and I really feel proud as well uh, that uh, even in a 2017 expert consensus document as well, my two papers are referred, as you can see. So what is sympathetic nervous system and its relationship with the cardiovascular system? So what tends to happen is if we look carefully, especially for the diseases like the, let it be hypertension, the arrhythmias, the heart failure, the metabolic syndrome or the chronic renal disease or even obstructive sleep apnea as well. So what happens is there is a higher sympathetic drive for the heart and also for the peripheral circulation. So if you look carefully at the nervous system, there is a greater correlation between not just the afferent and the efferent system. In fact, there is a chronic sympathetic activation in the triad of hypertension, the CKD, the heart failure and of course the hypertension or diabetes as well is related. This statue or uh, the Lord Shiva looks so calm and careful, you know, very calm. But when he becomes angry due to a stimulation part, then the Tandav tends to happen. And of course it does bring disaster as well. And the same thing happens even in the body as well. So what is happening over here as well? So as I was telling, so due to the chronic... Uh, sympathetic nervous system activation what is happening over here in fact there is no not only endothelial dysfunction the vascular hypertrophy the arrhythmias the cardiac hypertrophy but also it leads to atherogenosis so it is it literally tends to become a un uh, I would say like a necessary evil due to which a lot of changes are happening so what about the resistant hypertension we all are very much aware about the definition from the American Heart Association. So what happens is a patient has to take at least uh, three antihypertensive medications that two of different classes, okay, not of a single class. And and uh, yes, it should be including a diuretic in fact and the, still the blood pressure is not under control. However, but the problem what tends to happen is if someone is having a special comorbid condition like a diabetes, kidney disease or even coronary artery disease, uh, there is a lower value for that in fact. Okay. So now coming to the, what is the connection of the renal nerve with the sympathetic activity? What happens is, in fact, kidney seems to be the house for the central sympathetic drive. So what ha will happen is due to the afferent and the efferent nerves, there's defense mechanism which is happening, especially in the body. So the defense mechanism is in the form of contractility, higher contractility of the heart. There's increased heart rate, and which tends to raise the blood pressure. However, but also it leads to a lot of negative changes as well. What are those negative changes? Hypertrophy, arrhythmias, heart failure, atherosclerosis, and of course increased comorbid conditions as well. So. It has already been established that there's a definite role for the renal sympathetics, in fact, uh, as we already said about the different mechanism. So what happens is, how can we quantify the human sympathetic nervous system activity? So what happens is, uh, it has already been recorded using the postganglionic nerve traffic, okay? What is called as the clinical micro new uh, microneurography in fact okay so now coming back to our renal denervation so what happens is uh, there has been a lot of animal models as well which has already been showing that if you tend to reduce the sympathetic nervous system outflow to the kidney in fact you will be able to restore the physiological natriuresis and also the diuresis and of course which tends to cause the reduced renin release in fact, and that is how the surgical sympathetectomy had come up, in fact, okay, and uh, tends to even reduce the mortality as well. However, as we all know, you know, there are also other problems as well, like the bowel and bladder incompetence and also severe postural hypertension. And in fact, that is how those uh, minimally invasive techniques came, you know, catheter-based, like, so these are the different catheters which is available for uh, the renal denervation. Uh, so this is a, a really recent development which you can see it in the form of which is like a balloon based uh, catheter as well. 
in fact uh, so there are some of these like the one in which you see is in the sea over here so this is more like a irrigated balloon ultrasound catheter in fact okay and then over here so what do you see it is called as a single shot spiral rf catheter over here okay so this is like a irrigated multi electrode rf catheter over here this one okay so there is already a lot of techniques which is available in the form of a multi electrode basket catheter or even a balloon mounted bipolar rf catheter okay the uh, recent one which has become really popular is the micro needle catheter as well which is for the perivascular guanethidine injection <coughs> so as i was telling you radiofrequency technologies ha has already been in existence from different companies including the medtronic st jude medical and also the covidian uh, limited as well from ireland so they tend to del deliver different uh, wattages of energies which tends to cause the ablation in fact similarly other than the radio frequency there is also ultrasound technologies as well uh, they are mostly in the form of high intensity frequency ultrasound they tend to go and ablate it in fact and the newer ones which is coming up is like the chemical technologies for that so these chemical technologies what happens is uh, they seem to be pretty interesting i will show you some more example over here so for example this is the one what do you see it over here is so you take it around the catheter goes into the renal artery and then these needles tends to come out and these are the ones which do the sympathetectomy in fact so if you look on carefully on the fluoroscopy this is where you will see those needles coming out recently only like just in 2016 the first human uh, human uh, was treated with this newer technology in fact so what has been happening is we all are very much aware the true resistant hypertension patients are as high risk for the cardiovascular events in fact so there is that is why those uh, early studies which have has been there about renal denervation and resistant hypertension so a lot of benefits has been coming up and that is the reason multiple big huge publication came which were showing uh, a lot of benefit as well not just with blood pressure reduction systolic and diastolic even over long term as well in fact uh, studies like simplicity hypertension 2 study it showed the denervation is much superior to the medical management as well similarly what was happening is the light htn3 study showed that it it delivers a rapid and significant reduction in the office blood pressure and which is which is not there like you know just for a few days or few weeks in fact even after three months it tends to sustain so this is how the simplicity registry was uh, designed so it tried to include patients from everywhere in the world and they try to see for the changes in the office systolic blood pressure in fact okay so but there were some problems as well for that so what were the problems was the problems what was happening is they didn't show really uh, good or optimal results i'm going to discuss more about that later so what happens is normally we try to talk like renal denervation is related to the okay hyper systemic hypertension control but what about the other rules which are which we have already been saying so what happens is in fact the activation of the sympathetic nervous system also contributes contributes to the insulin resistance or that is the one which leads to the metabolic syndrome as well and that is why it has been speculated that renal sympathetic denervation may also have a substantial effect on the glucose metabolism so that is why those patients after doing the renal denervation they were shown that they tends even tends to improve the glucose metabolism and also insulin sensitivity in fact and that is how it was thought of that those patients who are having comorbid refractory hypertension, glucose intolerance, and also even obstructive slip apnea as well, they may be benefited. So now coming to the reasons why that study had failed, due to which there was a big setback for a lot of uh, 
in fact the whole segment of the therapy as well itself so there are multiple reasons for that multiple reasons in the sense like you know when you are not trying to monitor the adherence of medications what are you going to expect it's difficult in fact similarly the trial medications were not standardized nor they were even prescribed according to the guidelines similarly in fact 40% of the trial participants they required changes in medications for various reasons but when you are talking about the effect on outcome it's completely unknown similarly so what was happening is there is a unique population which is you know severe resistant hypertension which is being treated with at least five different drugs owing to the fact that only us american population has a higher prevalence of african american and obese patients and what about the standardization it was completely lacking actually okay so reasons are quite a lot for that so that's why and as i was telling you uh, that yes sympathetic nervous system is increased uh, activity is seen uh, not just for these two other uh, disease conglomerates but also in the diseases like congestive heart failure left ventricular hypertrophy even for atrial fibrillation as well and that is the reason i would really like to say is like okay so for example that is the reason for example in even in a fibrillation we don't try to just try to get a sinus rhythm for the patient we're trying to improve the overall benefits for example trying to decrease the symptomatic episodes trying to decrease the rate of complication due to the natural progression of the disease trying to give them uh, mortality benefits in fact so similarly the role of sympathetic nervous system denervation is also to give an overall benefit to the patient so to conclude it is a, not only a novel treatment for the management of resistant hypertension but also blood pressure re reduction can be achieved and of course um, 